Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Lost Islamic History Podcast. Today we're going to talk about one of the most amazing, wonderful, beneficial, and important inventions of all time. Coffee. Today over one and a half billion cups of coffee are drunk every single day all around the world. It's become a cultural staple almost everywhere you can travel to and is part of billions of people's daily routines. So where did this tasty and addictive drink come from? And when did it become so popular? Now, believe it or not, it's a relatively new drink. It's only been around for a few hundred years since the 1400s. Now, I know that sounds like a long time ago, but relative to the rest of human history, thousands and thousands of years, coffee is a pretty new invention. So where did it come from? Well, the legend goes that somewhere in Ethiopia or maybe Yemen, there was a goat herder who realized that every time his goats ate beans from one particular tree, they had a lot of extra energy and were jumping around all over the place and generally acting pretty crazy. I don't know about you, but if I saw my goats doing that, I would stay very, very far away from that tree. But apparently that goat herder was a pretty brave fellow and ended up chewing some of those beans and realized that he had more energy because of it. Eventually, the people in that region realize that if you grind the beans, you can dissolve the powder in water and make a dark drink that gives you more energy. Thus, coffee was born. Now, that story may or may not be true, but what's important is that during the 1400s, this new drink began to be pretty popular in Yemen. They called it qahwa, based on the Arabic root word qaha, which means having no appetite, because this drink tended to dull one's desire for more food. It was especially popular in Yemen among Sufis and other religiously oriented people as it gave them the energy to stay up at night worshipping God. From Yemen, the drink spread north into the Ottoman Empire where the Turks called it kahva. By the way, the Italians took the Turkish word and pronounced it as cafe and from that word came the English word coffee. Interestingly, at first some Islamic scholars in the Ottoman Empire had a temptation to declare kahva as haram or unlawful according to Islamic law. The reasoning for that was that this new, unknown drink affected the mind, so they were afraid it might be similar to wine, which is unlawful in Islam. In any case, that ban didn't last long, because during the reign of Sultan Suleiman Qalanuni, also known as the Magnificent in the West, the highest religious authority of the empire, the Grand Mufti Abu Saud Effendi, analyzed the drink and realized there is no legal basis in Islam to declare it unlawful, so the consumption of coffee was allowed again in the empire. And, as you can imagine, the people rejoiced. Throughout the empire, and especially in Istanbul now, coffee shops began to spring up all over the place. And European travelers took notice. Wealthy Venetian traders especially imported this new drink into Europe throughout the 1500s and 1600s. In fact, one of the main ports in Yemen where Europeans bought coffee beans was a city called Mocha. And from that, of course, we have the word Mocha for a specific style of coffee. Now, the Europeans also went through a religious legal issue with coffee. The Catholic authorities were tempted to declare the drink as unlawful, especially since it was a quote-unquote Muslim drink. But eventually, in the year 1600, the Catholic Church again allowed its use, and again, the people rejoiced. Now, probably the most important impact of coffee in history was the fact that it helped pull Europe into the Renaissance and Enlightenment eras. Throughout Europe's Dark Ages, alcohol was the drink of choice. You'd start your day off with beer soup, have a piece of bread with beer for lunch, and finish off your day with some bedtime beer to help you sleep. Needless to say, it's pretty tough to build a stable and organized society when everyone is always drunk. When coffee was introduced, people began to drink that instead. And coffee has the exact opposite effect of alcohol. It makes people more alert, makes them think more clearly, and keeps them awake. With coffee houses opening up from Paris to London to Florence, more Europeans began to actually think about things like philosophy, government, the rights of man, which all helped spur the Enlightenment, which eventually brought democracy to Europe and helped it enter that era of imperialism where the Europeans conquered most of the Muslim world, including the birthplace of coffee, Yemen. Isn't that ironic? Well, there you have it, the story of coffee from obscure goat herders to European enlightenment to imperialism. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Lost Islamic History Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Salaam alaikum.